You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, welcome back to Champion Chinese. My name is Pei Pei Champion. I'm the founder and director and principal teacher of Champion Chinese Language Institute. Today, I invited two of my former students. Um, we are going to talk about their experience in my program. And uh, um, here they are. Hello, my name is Teresa Diaz McGee. I am a wellness coach, a professional musician, and a conductor. And currently I'm teaching Tai Chi and Qigong at the Wu Healing Center, where I'm a practitioner. Nina? <laughs> <coughs> Hello, my name is Nina Sakun, and um, I, um, I uh, worked as a chemist, and um, I, um, I studied with Pepe for uh, uh, an intensive week, um, and before that, I also learned other languages, so it was interesting to me to see another approach to teaching language. Mm, great. Um, so basically, Teresa has attended my uh, 10 hours lesson, which lasts for 10, uh, five weeks. Um, the program I donated to West Hartford Continuing Education years ago. Um, Nina uh, just graduated from my 10 hours uh, Chinese program, uh, which ended um, about 10 days ago for 10 hours. And uh, I would like to uh, have them talk about their experience in my classroom. Uh, only 10 hours. What is, what was their expectation when they get into the classroom? Why do they take the program? Um, and um, what have they learned? Uh, what is the most exciting uh, point in their experience about this, you know, uh, coming to the program? And um, I just want to uh, have them share with you about their 10 hours experience. Basic this 10 hours is only a short introduction. Um, I will, I use like two hours to uh, introduce the background, historic background about this language. And then about two hours to teach them uh, the 37 traditional phonetic bopama or you call Zhuyin sounding symbols. And then uh, rest of the time, we basically were singing, playing, and um, dancing sometimes, uh, using our body, um, small movement, uh, because uh, there is a limitation of our uh, classroom. And then um, I introduced them a lot of characters through uh, the Bapama symbols. And uh, basically, at the end, let's listen to what happened. And are they happy with the program? What do they think this program can do uh, to our American students or Chinese student or the world's Chinese language student? And what is going to impact, what is the impact if we can learn this language in this way, um, what, what is the impact and what is the good result that we probably can foresee and expect? Here, um, Teresa, would you start? <laughs> well, I'm not sure that I can remember all of the, the points, so just remind me if, if I forget something that you'd like me to address. But I yeah. remember from a few years ago when I took the class with you, that uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to take the class was because I was also a student of Tai Chi and Qigong. I was interested in learning more about the culture. Mm -hmm. And I uh, have been a 
casual student of languages my whole life, and so that mm -hmm. interested me as well. And going into the program, given that it was so uh, brief, um, I didn't really have an expectation that I would come out speaking Chinese. But what I was surprised to learn after only a few short weeks is that you had actually managed to teach us to to read and understand traditional Chinese characters. I was surprised and delighted at that. Mm -hmm. And also that the, the unexpected benefit was that I learned so much about the culture through the study of the language. Mm -hmm. And I, I discovered that it was, although I, you know, I knew it was a beautiful, interesting culture already, I, there was wisdom and depth in the characters Mm -hmm. that the characters revealed about the culture that I had not expected. And mm -hmm. I, I, I grew to think it was even more beautiful language than I had expected. Uh -huh. you, you want to give us an example which like particular characters stick to you? Like you were mentioned about the, the gold, the, you know, yeah, that one comes the to eye. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a few years ago, yeah. and we did not, <laughs> my husband and I took the class together, and we did not continue mm -hmm. after that uh, in our busy lives. So um, I can't say that I remember specifically the characters, but I do remember qualities of them. Um, as you mentioned, the goat, or, or the symbol for horse, or dragon, or king. The, there was so much more than just a representation a symbolic representation of the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it it uh, revealed uh, much about the culture and the philosophy and the thinking of the people mm -hmm. that were using using those characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. remember we were talking about the, the king. We were is like three lines, right? Mm -hmm. Remember mm -hmm. what did Nina remind us? What is the first line? Heaven is yes, it the and then bottom heaven is earth, and the middle is it the people in people? between, and, and then, then the ruler. Yes, yeah, connecting them. Yeah, but tell us why that, why that makes king. Is this this king doesn't come from nowhere, right? This actually represent Chinese it ideology about what can be a ruler. Yes, yes. Pepe always, you always like to connect uh, <laughs> the characters with culture and hi history. And so that makes learning these characters more easily uh, memorized, I think, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So you did that with a lot of characters. Whenever you presented a new character is always with... Uh, as with mnemonic devices, would you call that? Mm -hmm. And so it was It was much easier to learn a character than one would think. I remember you drew, was it a dragon at the end? Yeah. Where I went to the board and I thought <laughs> I couldn't remember that because it consisted of like, I don't know, 10, 10 or 15 lines. Maybe and, more. I think it's about 20, 20 lines. 30? Quite yeah. a few lines in it. And, right, not 10. That would be for beginners. <laughs> and uh, I was surprised, I, you know, because I said it would take me a hundred times to write it before I could learn it. Uh -huh. And then when I went to the board, I could just write it because, you, you know, you gave these tricks sort of of how to, uh, you know, how to think of a character so that you could, you know, bring it back very quickly after you just saw it. And, you know, I think you chose me to go to the board because I, had the highest guesses of how long it would take to learn it. <laughs> and instead, I just, you know, I actually reproduced it. You just get it yeah. at the, the first yeah. time, I was right? surprised, right. It yeah. Was, so it's a very uh, nice system for learning. Yeah. Actually, I was always telling people, um, I want to say that, but I'm afraid that people will uh, get angry with me because I always want to say Chinese is if not the most, but will be one of the easiest, the most logical and <laughs> beautiful and rich language, one of, okay, languages in the world. And when, why do I say it's, it's easy? Because what you see, whatever your physical eyes can see, you can copy it. And, or whatever you can comprehend, 
and understood, understand or imagine, just draw down, and you are not going to be too far off. Okay, so have you ever seen any language can be like this, learn or taught mm -hmm. like this? You know, because Chinese basically do not need to go to those, you know, uh, drill, right? Like you repeat it 10 or 20, 100 times. You, you actually do not need that. And that actually is the one of the most um, inefficient way to learn anything. Okay, the, uh, according to the most modern scientist study, um, our human being, we have a biggest power. That is your heart mm -hmm. that emit the, the, the biggest energy in your whole body. When your emotion, when your heart is involved with something you do, you see, or you read, or you sing, or you play. That power is huge and that can retain and move you. And some people, some other spiritual people might even think, oh, that emotion, your, your, your mind is the language that we can communicate to divine uh, beings. Um, so I feel, because I, I, I myself, to tell you the truth, I'm curious too. Because through all those years, not only Nina, you too, you, you did try that before. I don't know if you remember, even the jacket, you oh, did yeah, try that yeah. too. Mm -hmm. And then almost never fail. Almost everybody. Remember, I say, Nina, remember I told you that day, I said, I know you are very smart, or you won't be, you, you must have big brains, or you won't be a chemist. But <laughs> <laughs> it's not because you are. You have big brain, that's why you can do it one time, you know. It's because this language is alive. <laughs> that dragon is actually a living dragon and is talking to you. And also, you are using some of the Bopama symbols while you are writing it because you already remember Ma and you remember the body, the Shi, right? So it's kind of you just put it there. Oh, here comes the mouth, you know, facing mm -hmm. down, and here comes the body, shi, and then, and then you, you know. You well, know your system makes it easy to remember and easy to learn because it's very logical. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, it's, uh, and you present it so well and with such energy and enthusiasm that it, it's infectious. We want to learn more also. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but I really think it has to do with the method. To, the mm -hmm. way it's, um, you've developed a system that is very clear and easy to understand and easy to apply. Mm -hmm. and yeah. that's, what made it, and that's what makes it different than other language systems that I've studied. Uh -huh. uh, that what, what? takes so much repetition, like you said earlier, uh -huh. where you're just practicing uh, not only words but phrases over and over and over again and just doing it through memorization. What's different about your, your program is that it doesn't it doesn't require mem memorization to understand it mm. because there's so much logic behind it. And so it's, it's a very natural, um, it, it's a, a, an evolution, a natural evolution mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, understanding the characters. Oh, you make me feel so good. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> You're one it's of true, the angels. It's true. That, because, because I, um, I am curious, I have been curious too about how come how come I, I can do it? Is, is it me or is this this language? And I, I believe this is my mission to do this, mm. to come to this life. And um, I... Um, Why do you feel that way? Why do you think it's your mission? Well, because I once told um, people about my... Um, my goal in my life, because I I didn't have a uh, I didn't grow up in a very healthy, complete family. My father was not has, hasn't been too responsible to to when um, when we were young, 
with my me and my brother and sister. So my whole life, I don't have a big goal. I, I have the biggest goal is I want to be a doctor so that I can save lives, save lives. Mm. And then later on, I found out, no, no way. I, I'm afraid of rats and mice. <laughs> and there's no way I can be a doctor. So I changed my such a great big goal into tiny little one. I just want to produce very healthy and happy children mm -hmm. and be a good mother and find a good husband. Okay? And I want to be the best wife, best mother, and best, <laughs> best woman. Um, but later on, I found out um, it's, it's not you can control everything. You know? Your child one day has to grow. And then um, she'll be an individual. But of course, you still love your child. And then I found out I didn't know there is a big goal behind me until I have my daughter. When she was born, I look at her and I say, all my life, I experienced so much challenges. And every single one, I conquer it with uh, pleasure and I deal with every challenge with pleasure and I learn so much and it's all because of my culture give me mm -hmm. so much uh, energy and uh, um, hope and strength and I want that for my daughter okay so I brought her to Chinese school. And then I found out so many kids that take so long and they couldn't grab this language. And I don't know why, <laughs> because how come I, I just did it before? And then I found out I need to make this language easy mm -hmm. and um, applicable. And, uh, and then I found out that my language was kind of in danger, okay, because um, what I was taught is the language passed down to me from thousands of years ago, from my ancestor. Hmm. And then how come nowadays people do not want it because they say it's too difficult? I, I didn't know there is two systems before when mm -hmm. I was in Taiwan. And then later on, I found out, okay, there is a historical background. Um, it's a man-made, you know, during the um, turnover, government turnover in China, mm -hmm. the uh, communist takeover China, Republic of China, and uh, build the peoples of Republic of China. And so they, they, they have their political purpose. And then I found out, oh, that's the reason. But is it really, my, this language is so difficult that nobody can understand and, and continue to learn it. Therefore, we need to simplify it and romanize it. And how about thousands of years, civilization, and then I couldn't bear to know, to imagine if I become the last person, last generation to understand that. So Pepe, maybe for, uh, for new people who didn't hear your previous talks, mm -hmm. you could explain that there's traditional characters and simplified characters, right? Yeah. That's what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, basically there are two written systems right now. One oral language that is Beijing, based on Beijing dialogue, that's Mandarin, okay? But before 1912, um, like I will use uh, Connecticut as, a, as a, an analogy. For example, if I live across the Farmington River from you, then I will not understand your language. Okay, so even one state can have different uh, cities, everybody speak different languages. Mm. Imagine that. But whole China, for thousands of years, we can read the same written language. That is the traditional language, traditional script. Okay, so it, 
they even Japan. I go to J I went to Japan when I was in high school. I don't speak Japanese, but I can write uh, mm -hmm. and communicate with uh, the the family that mm. that uh, have me as a guest. Mm. I can communicate with the father, mm -hmm. so that we can understand. Although mm -hmm. it's we sound it differently, mm -hmm. um, but since 1949, uh, Communist China took over China, and then they simplified it. So they have their way to simplify it. Basically, um, for example, the horse, they will remove four legs and just put one one straight line. Okay, and then um, a nation. They will change the nation, origin of the nation. You 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 will see uh, people. You will see the ground. You will see a military power, the spear, and you see the boundary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right now we are arguing about the border of our nation. Right. Mm -hmm. You need to secure your border, and that's a basic things for Chinese. And then later on they use, because in ancient China it's um, a dynasty is not Republican, Republic. So um, in the square line you have king and then you have a dot under, that would be J, remember? Mm -hmm. And then, so what is J? J is a symbol for the stamp of the king. So that that actually also uh, is a symbol for the nation. But you, you think about when the generations, after generations, the country change into a republic, and then people are very important, okay? And people's ground education, uh, their jobs, are important and your military power is very important not to attack but you need it to protect yourself so simplify is only a square with a jade and traditional will be a, a, a square with people and foundation and then the, you have the spears so in a way actually the traditional one is more <coughs> Uh, practical to us right now is not the like a dictator's mm -hmm. uh, symbol, right? So in a way, um, what I want to say is somehow the simplification has gone to a a way of no return. It's going to bring the whole civilization to the drain because people are not going to be able to recognize, uh, to read the real symbol anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, this is why I create the system because of my child, because I want her to continue with this legend. Okay. To know the richness and the fullness of the, of the culture yes. through the language. Yes. Because the traditional symbols have so much more information in them than the simplified symbols. Yes. Do I understand? Yes. Yeah. That, that's why right now I make it uh, easy to understand and uh, so that my student basically can memorize. That depends on their age. Like one hour in the group of the size, if five years old, you do not want to give them 50 characters mm -hmm. or 30 mm -hmm. characters an mm -hmm. hour. You know? But if there is you know, a teenager coming to the class, not only, I will not drill them, but I will still, just by talking like this, mm -hmm. and drawing the pictures, and telling, talking about the philosophy, and then they can memorize 15 to 40 characters an hour. Very quickly, yeah. Yeah, so, so but using this speed, they can very quickly get into uh, the depth of the the, the written material. Mm. Of okay. the Where do you see the future of traditional Chinese language? What, or what do you hope for your program in the future? I hope, um, I have tried very hard. The, it has been almost two decades that I'm doing this. I donate my program, you know, and 12 years 
five schools, teaching six schools a day, it's very difficult because the mainstream is doing the other way, is doing the simplification and romanization. I hope it won't, I hope it won't be too long. It need to be very powerful leader. Either political leader has that wisdom to understand this 5,000 years civilization shouldn't be killed mm. or extinguished in our hand. So you're hoping that um, a China, China? Maybe China, maybe Taiwan, Taiwan maybe will, America, okay? Will, maybe mm -hmm. England or Australia, maybe India. A political leader with that big heart and humanity and understand this is the only device that um, human being can communicate with the ancient culture, ancient civilization. To save thousands to save of it. years of culture yeah, yeah. through the language. Through the language. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, um, or some philanthropist mm -hmm. that they do, they are so, um, so loving and they, they are so powerful, they are rich enough, they don't need to <laughs> kowtow to any other um, political bias or you outside know, agendas, influ influences, outside right. influences. Mm -hmm. And then I will work with them mm -hmm. to develop, further develop this system to help all the people. So you want all, because I imagine now people who go to university have learned traditional characters, right? Um, usually a little bit. Because Just if you do not learn the traditional character, you basically have very, very uh, big difficulty to learn everything uh, written or printed mm -hmm. before 1956. Mm -hmm. right. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, so that's what I mean. A certain Le a certain class, if I can say that, of mm -hmm. Chinese people d are learning it right now, the traditional characters. Very, very few. But if you do not find out the key, the key is Zhu Ying Bopomo symbol. But if Zhu Ying Bopomo symbol has to torture you one whole year, <laughs> then people don't want it, mm -hmm. right? But the key is the Bopoma symbol. The, mm -hmm. the key is the effective teaching and learning of those 37 sounding symbols mm -hmm. and quickly apply them into the learning mm -hmm. of the traditional script. Mm -hmm. That is, that is uh, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you very much for your question and your feedback. And then we are going to invite more of uh, my former students and maybe uh, public figures to talk about this language and what we can do uh, for our future generations and about this beautiful uh, 5,000 years ancient civilization. Thank you very much. 再见.